How to create your own CSS class. There are a number of CSS classes that are standard and default and correspond to standard and default HTML tags, such as h1, h2, h3, the anchor tag, which is an A, or the unordered list tag, which is a UL, and so forth. But what if you would like to create your own class or style uh, with, with give it your own name and define the attributes for that style? Um, it's very easy to do and it creates a tremendous amount of flexibility and power in terms of how you organize your code and make changes to your page down the line. So let's get started. Now, once again, I do not recommend you use the Windows desktop as a place to organize your web files, but for purposes of a simple demonstration, I have on my Windows desktop an HTML file. Uh, the first thing I will do is bring into play a second file, which is my uh, CSS file or cascading style sheet. And you'll notice that has a .css extension, which is what determines that it is a cascading style sheet or otherwise known as a style sheet. The first thing I'll need to do is create a link to that style sheet, and I'll cheat a little bit and create uh, use a little snippet of code that I've already created to create that link. So I'll go into my little snippet file here, and I'll grab the code. Great, and then I'll go into my HTML file, bring it up in my text editor. And we'll put that uh, link in the head section of the uh, HTML file. Great. So now we'll go into the body and we'll uh, create a little content. So I'll put a div tag. And if you're not sure what a div tag is, you can look at one of my earlier lessons on the difference between a div and a span tag. But a div is basically a block of content. And we're going to put our test content here. We'll save our work. And we'll go look at the web page. And we'll see we've got a test content there. Nothing too fancy. OK, now we're going to go into the style sheet. And we're going to create a custom style. Let's call this style um, test. You define a custom class uh, by preceding it with a period. So it's dot test. And here's where we'll start to um, set up the properties for this class. Let's first uh, change the color of the text. So we'll say color is red. And the next thing we need to do is go back to our HTML file and um, indicate that that div uses this test class. So we'll go back to our HTML file. In the div opening div tag, we'll say class equals. And in this case, it'll be test. Now that we've done that, we'll go back to our web page, refresh, and we should see that our content is now red. And the reason for that is that in our div, we've indicated that the div uses a class called test. There's a link to our external style sheet. In that style sheet, we have a custom class called test, and the color is red. Let's take it a little bit further. What if we wanted to say that this text is going to be aligned to the right side of the page? So we'll say text align right. Save our work. Go back to our web page. Refresh. And look at that. The text is now all the way to the right side of the page. Let's put it in the center just to uh, make things a little bit easier to see. Refresh our work. Now we're right in the center. That's great. Let's now uh, change the size of the font. So let's say font size. Let's make it pretty big so we can really see what we're doing here. Refresh our work. Now it's pretty big. So uh, we'll do one more thing. We'll say the uh, font weight is bold. Great. Go back and refresh. That's our bold. And what if we want to move it down just a little bit? So we'll say the uh, the margin top is 25 pixels. Go back, refresh our page. That move it down 25 pixels. And there you go. We've created a custom class named test.
We have to find the attributes of that test. Uh, in this case, the color of the font is red. The text align is center of the page. The font size is 50. We could certainly make it much smaller by changing that to, let's say, 25, and go back here, and you can see it's much smaller. The font weight is bold, and the top margin is 25. You'll start to notice how much how much easier this life makes this how much easier this makes your life if we were to create a second div with the exact same test uh, exact same content exact same style reference go back and now we've got two blocks of content but we only had to define the style once if we go back to our style sheet and we say that we want the color of the f um, the font in this uh, custom class to be blue let me go back to our web page, refresh. So, once again, we've made one change, but we've seen the change take place in two places. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. If I wanted to create yet a third div, copy and paste, and let's just say test content number one, and this is test content number two, and this is test content number three so we can really see the difference and go back and refresh the page and you can see that I've only made a change in one place but it's changed three blocks of text and any change you make to your style sheet uh, change the font size to a hundred let's say this is one change I'm making right here only one place but when I go back to my web page you can see that the change has taken place affected three blocks of code because all three blocks of code ref, uh, use that custom style. If I were to go into one of those blocks of code and take out the reference to that style, now this div has no connection to our custom style. We go back and refresh the page, you'll notice that this text goes back to the default size, color, and alignment whereas the previous two blocks that are still attached to our custom style as you can see here div number one uses the test class div number two uses the test class but div number three does not so let's recap when you want to create a custom style of course you have to have your html file and you need to have your dot css file either in the same folder unless you specify other uh, specify otherwise then in your code you need to have a link to that CSS file in your head section. And here's the name of the file we're linking to. And then in your uh, presentation code, when you have your block elements such as a div or a span or a paragraph, you want to have define what class is used. And then in your style sheet, you need to define to create the class and create define the attributes that make up that class. So this is our custom class called test. Here is our blocks of uh, content that use that custom class. And here is our link to our external style sheet. And when you add it all up, we've got uh, highly stylized content that we've defined in one place. And when we need to make changes, we only make one change. And the change is propagated wherever we make uh, a reference to that custom style. And that's really it in a nutshell, how to create your own custom CSS class.